All right, we're back. Uh, still having discussions <laughs> regarding the 2023 elections. I think it was uh, it was quite a, a very very interesting, intense one with our previous guests. Many um, elections have been intense. Yes, <laughs> indeed, the, the conversation was intense. But we're looking next at um, the reports and observations on um, uh, observations by observers. Uh, sorry for the repetition. Uh, what did the international and local observer groups uh, notice during the elections? Of course, some of them have giving some uh, reports. I have a, we have a couple of them that we can look at. If you check out uh, the news and all that's been happening today, uh, we hear that international observers are blaming INEC uh, for the challenges identified um, as far as the elections are concerned. Um, in fact, the one I just saw dropping um, is that the Coalition of International uh, Election Observers has blamed INEC for the lack of transparency uh, in the conduct of the 2023 um, presidential and national assembly uh, elections. Um, this is called the Joint Election Observation Mi Mission JOM, uh, involving the International Republican Institute, the National Democratic Institute. We have the, uh, the NDI led by Joyce Banda, who is a former um, president of uh, Malawi, is what they are saying. Um, so we're just going leave, to leave that for now and move over to some of the identified challenges. They identified... Uh, they said they observed the late opening of polling locations, uh, logistical failures created tensions, and secrecy of the ballot was compromised in some polling units, uh, given overcrowding. They also noted that, that at the close of polls, challenges with electronic transfer of results and their upload to a public portal in a timely manner uh, undermined citizen confidence at a crucial moment in the process. Um, they also say, quote, moreover, inadequate communication and lack of transparency by the Independent National Electoral Commission about their course and the extent uh, and extent that's of the upload failures created confusion and eroded voters' trust in the process. Um, they say the combined effect of these uh, problems disenfranchised Nigerian voters in many areas, although the scope and scale are currently unknown. So it's a bit of a balanced one there. Akarjan uh, Sirimovu is uh, Esquire, is a legal practitioner. He's also the coordinator of uh, the People's Advocates. Um, this is a civil society organization that fights for the rights of peoples globally. Um, he was uh, an observer with the Transition Monitoring Group and a few other co uh, coalitions um, right there in Port Harcourt, uh, in River State, rather. Um, good morning to you, uh, uh, Barrister. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Kofi. It's um, a pleasure to be here. All right. Okay, can you just run us through... Yes, the, the, the organizations that you, you observe the elections alongside. Okay, um, we uh, worked in collaboration with Transition Monitoring Group, uh, Community Initiative for Enhanced Peace and Development, Partnership Initiative in Niger Delta, um, fondly known as PIND, um, NOPRIM, which is a network for police reform in Nigeria. And of course, um, we also had um, that um, you know, collaboration with the uh, police situation room. The challenge we had was you know, that seamless access to INEC. Let's quickly get your thoughts on this. Uh, you, as an observer, would you quickly bring us up, up to speed with what your observations were as regard this these elections? Okay. Um, basically, um, you know, we had high expectations for uh, these elections. We expected you know, to have a free and fair election. We expected an independent INEC. We expected, you know, uh, things to go well. However, what we saw on the scene was, you know, quite different. It was quite different. Um, the initial issue was late arrival of materials. That was the initial issue. And, you know, we started making, you know, phone calls to the electoral officers. And then the reports we got from the electoral officer in um, Obiapol local government area especially was that 
the police officials that were supposed to escort the materials to the pulling units were not available to do so. So that was the initial reports we got and we escalated it. And of course, that caused overcrowding because you know there are some pulling units where you have 6,000 persons you know, waiting and you could understand the tension that caused. And some areas like Woji in Obiapoluku government area, when they started voting as at about 5 p.m. and voted till about 2 a.m. in the morning, you could imagine what could have transpired and the lots of voters that would have been disenfranchised. And then there was the issue of uploading of the results initially initially it was the declaration of the results we noticed that some pulling units after the voters had voted the results were not declared because thugs came in and moved the materials so one of our own um, um conclusion was that there was a great battle in River State between political minds, the government of the day, with the collusion of INEC and the popular will of the people. That one thing we, we noticed. So at the point um, where the results ordinarily would have been uploaded, we received feeds that the presiding officers did not have the codes or the password to upload those results that for us was a major issue because you know before now i had you know those press conference interviews and told the people the procedure that immediately after voting the results will be transmitted you know, via the electronic uh, beavers machine. And that was what the people expected and that we didn't get. So our position is that there is that, you know, failure of INEC by logistics and possible collusion of INEC in River State with the River State government to circumvent the will of the people. Kofi? B, I mean, like what you've said as an observer, but when you say collusion with the government of River State, that's a very grave allegation. Um, what evidence do you have that the government of River State is, is involved in, 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 in colluding with ANEC to rig the elections? It's a very serious allegation. You need to have, I'm sure your lawyer, you know, some evidence to back that up. Yeah, Kofi, you know, um, we were discussing, you know, consistently with the um, INEC officials. We were getting information from them. We were talking to them. And, you know, at the point where we noticed that the beavers were now at the local government, you know, area and those beavers you know were there till the next morning so we had looked at it and felt like oh there's likelihood of compromise because ordinarily the courts were supposed to be given to the eos and the eos send the code to the um, um supervising officers who are supposed to send the same codes down to the presiding officers. So that was not done. And it raised the issue of suspicion majorly. And when we talk about, you know, this collusion, we had pulling units in um, Rume Precon, Rume Me as it is close to the governor's house, where um, we had um, thugs, security personnel and then the presiding officers moving materials to unknown destination in the query local government area 
we had the same thing in Akukutoro. We had an uh, uh, the local government. Um, I think local government chairman, an official of government, move the um, the um, the entire results with the result sheets and everything out of the local government area. What more do we need? So there has been that compromise, and you know, in our own opinion, INEC has failed the people. that this is a reflection of what happened in the entire states of the federation most likely most likely basically we can you know we can speak for river states because we were on ground while we were patrolling in a particular uh ward nine unit um, 16 and unit 45 the people there flagged us down and said that security forms. Courage, if you can hear us, I think that we seem to have uh, some uh, connection issues, yes. but uh, you probably would have to connect with us okay. and would like to share your yeah. thoughts more as to if, okay, you know, what happened in. Okay, so so courage. I'm 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 glad to have you back, or we're glad to have you back. Can you hear us? Well, thank you. I can I can hear you clearly now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so my question to you before all of that distortion was that: Do you think that what happened or what transpired from your observation in River State is a reflection of what happened in the 36 states of the Federation, including the FCT? Can you hear me? I think uh, we have a, a frozen. <laughs> so well, maybe, you know, but you know, it's maybe uh, the network uh, yes. You know, it's again. it's it's um it's uh, what do you call it again? Um, uh, you know, for me, I still want courage you know, to give us some sort of evidence to back up his claim that uh, the River State government uh, was working hand in hand with uh, INEC <laughs> officials to to scuttle the election. Uh, are you there, courage? I'm back, I'm back. Okay, so, yes. so, so my sure, question, sure. I, mean, I mean, just before we get back to, you know, uh, Kofi, you probably didn't answer the other question. But just before we get back to that point now, I'm asking, if you think that what happened in, I mean, according to your observation, what happened in River State, it's uh, the same thing that happened in the 36 states of the Federation, including the AFCT. Uh, the fact that materials arrive late, like you have mentioned, the issue of beavers and the fact that the police officers were not sufficient or available, you know, to escort these materials and, you know, the officials. Uh, I'd like you to share your thoughts briefly on that. Okay, I cannot categorically say that it's the same thing that happened in the entire, you know, states of the Federation. However, we also received reports from Bielsa states um, of late arrival of materials. In fact, there were some pulling units where materials never arrived. And I think they, they have, um, you know, um, re-election in those um, areas. So I cannot, although persons in Lagos have, you know, you know shared their opinion and said, this is what happened in um, um, Lagos states, but for me to state categorically that it's the same thing that happened in the entire states of the federation i'm not peritus to say so because the trackers we had on the field were in river states and then a few others um, we had um, in Bielsa that could give us feeds but not from the uh, federation thank you okay um uh, back to the river state issue um, i don't know maybe we need to uh, you may need to retract that because uh, you i don't know what evidence you have to say that the government of river state colluded with INEC to rig the elections um uh i guess we don't want to 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 you know to uh, smear anyone's character here and even the 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 uh the reports of the governor going from place to place to you know pulling you to tell them not to use the beavers has been um countered it's been rejected those reports have been rejected by the River State uh, Commissioner of Information says it's not true. Um, Kofi, where you have officials of the government of River State, 
carrying thugs, going to um, pulling units to stop them from declaring the results, cutting away with um, materials. That's I am materials for the election. What would you call that? Did you see him personally moving around with thugs? We received reports of that from our trackers in the field. Was there any, any pictorial or video evidence to support that? Kofi, uh, um, perhaps I'll look into our archive and send you some, All if right. we have. Okay. But I'm, I'm looking at a typical result from River State. Um, this is, is sent to me by a very uh, trusted source who was a, a party, um, not a party agent, but one of the support groups. Um, they had to follow the, the, uh, the motorcade of the INEC officials and security operatives to the RAC center, you know, after the thing left their polling unit. They've, they've come out with this result, and I've asked for the, um, this is, seems to be a certified true copy. I've asked for a copy from the agent, because, I mean, if you're showing me the, a, a, an altered result, you know, the official uh, form EC8A, okay, at least you can show me the one that was signed by all the agents present to um, show me what it was before it was altered so we can compare. But this one is uh, from River State, uh, local government Obiapo, registration area, that's RA, um, so the uh, RAC uh, is the registration area center. Uh, that's Oroigwe. I don't know if that was where you were. And it's the polling unit is um, Rumo Logi Open Space 2. Rumo Logi Open Space 2. There's a code there. I can't say the code quite well. Number of voters, 1,208. Uh, uh, number of accredited voters, 277. Uh, number of ballot papers issued, 594. I'm not going to go into all that. But the thing is this. The... Figures for different parties have been altered. You can see that with Penn. Um, they wrote 17 for APC, and then that 17, they put a 2 in front to make it 217. And for LP, they wrote uh, 227, and they canceled the 2 to make it 0. So it now became 27. Is this something that you have seen to be the case across, uh, across the state and, you know, from the other states that you have access to in terms of your network with other CSOs and observers? What I can categorically say that raised suspicion is the fact that as at about 10 a.m., 12 a.m. on the election day, we had, you know, cases and reports of over 28 uh, pulling units and also in Ward 4 of uh, Falga, where the form E8 were missing. So uh, that again raised suspicion of likelihood of manipulation of results because standard procedure is that the presiding officer comes to the pulling unit with all the sensitive materials and non-sensitive materials and at the close of voting the record is declared or the votes are declared and then imputed into form e8 but the very fact that form e8 was missing in most um pulling units over 28 pulling units um, as our report you know shows um, raised suspicion that there is that likelihood that those results will be rewritten or will be written or manipulated and all they needed and our suspicion is that the reason they did not allow um, those results to be declared at the polling unit is so that people will not have a record of the results so all they need to do is to have the number of accredited voters and then they can write whatever results they want to write. So as for alterations, I am not aware, um, but this is the scenario we have that is likely or, or that creates the likelihood of manipulation.
Mm. So are you saying that, you know, uh, your organization or yourself did not observe or see uh, these alterations or mutilation, like I like to call them, all of the cancellations on the papers, because there are a lot of results, not just in River State, that has uh, these mutilations on them. So was this also not part of your observation? Okay, this was not uh, part of our observations, although pictures like this in you know, came you know, on the platform. However, uh, this is not something we we really looked into. You know, observation is pre-election, election day, and post-election. So these, uh, these are like, you know, post-election observations. Hmm. Okay, uh, you, you, apart from being an observer in this election, you are a lawyer, um, and a very good one at that, because uh, I know. Um, We've seen what's played out at the at the um, at the National Coalition Center. Um, what what do you remedy do you think uh, the the parties have? Because you see such a, a unit, one polling unit, but uh, the, it, the the number of votes can 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 add up or subtract from any of the candidates. Um, do you think that the relevant laws allow? the parties to be attended to in their concerns we looked into at that national level uh, as per polling unit by polling unit thank you kofi um you see uh section 65 of the electoral act talks about uh, returning officers you know declaring um, the results and the fact that those results they declare are final. However, there is a proviso that says that the commission, that's INEC, can review those results within seven days from the declaration of those results. And that is what we had put out there for you know, political parties to take advantage of that section of the Electoral Act uh, 2022 has amended and petition, petition INEC to review uh, the results in polling units where they feel that, you know, the vote, sorry, the, the results declared is not a reflection of what happened at the various, you know, polling units. As at yesterday, we received reports you know, from one of the political parties that while they were at the, um, you know, collation center that, you know, some people loyal to the government of the day came and moved um, the entire collation process to another venue. So, you know, these are the kind of irregularities that they can raise to justify, you know, their claims. And you see, the problem they have, which is why we are calling out INEC, is the fact that in most of the polling units, the presiding officers did not declare the results. So that's a major challenge. Because if results have been declared in polling units and from E8 given to the various party agents after they had signed it, then that can be the basis for them to raise questions when they see a contrary result from um, the returning officer. However, in the pooling unit where that was properly done, I think they may also raise that question. Then on grounds of irregularity, INEC or INEC officials or ad hoc staff not following the due process at, as outlined in the you know, guideline for the uh, electoral process, they can raise objections to that regard, even calling for either cancellation or for re-election in such uh, polling units. So, but, um, let me ask you, uh, we are in this system and you're very conversant with it. Do you see any compliance? Do you see any obedience to some of these uh, observations and some of the things that you have suggested, I mean, in consonance with the Electoral Act? 
like I uh, said uh, yesterday in an interview, the law does not invoke itself. The law does not enforce itself. It takes the people or the affected persons to invoke the provision of the law. Nobody gives you what you don't ask for. Freedom is not given freely, neither are rights given freely. So that provision of the law is there. It's a new law. It should be tested. That simply means that um, petitions can be raised by the political parties sent to um, the commission talking about INEC. And we are hopeful that INEC um, should have given also, you know, teeth to that law by having a sort of commission of inquiry or a panel that can look into such grievances. So um, it is when it is tested that we will talk about compliance. The, the results are still coming out. So we still have about six days for them to take advantage of this provision because the commission has the right to obtain the results or the declaration of the returning officer if there is any illegality found, if there is any irregularity found, or if it is found that he did not declare the result voluntarily because there are circumstances where result is declared by duress. That's the mischief behind that law and that is why we have that law. So they can take advantage of that window. It settles some matters within a short period of time because focusing on the courts and the tribunal will take a longer period of time for them to fight in order to recover their mandates. All right, you talked about, um, uh, according to Mr. Movie, you talked about um, uh, some of the things observed, and one of the things you mentioned was that uh, um, the results are not declared at the various polling units, uh, you know, and um, I'm sure the from E8 or EC8A was not uh, signed or handed over to the party agents. Uh, this is, is impossible for this to happen because the Electoral Act stipulates this, and the uh, regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections in Nigeria as released by INEC in 2022, June, uh, 4th of June, 2022, is clear. And that upon signing this, upon um, the conduct of the polls, the, the results have to be uh, announced. But before they announce, they have to be signed by all the party agents where available, where available. And then um, copies given to the police officer on duty and to the party agents as well. Then... Um, the results should be announced for everyone who is there, and a copy should be pasted um, at that polling unit. Um, so, so it's clear. We can look at se section uh, 61, even 62 of the uh, uh, no, no, section 60, 60 of of the electoral act. And if you wouldn't mind, I'll just read read it. Uh, this is signed electoral act. It says that um, the subsection one says that the presiding officer shall after counting the votes at the polling unit, enter the votes scored by each candidate in a form uh, to be prescribed by the commission as the case may be. Uh, sub 2 says the form shall be signed by and stamped uh, by the presiding officer and countersigned, signed and stamped by the presiding officer and countersigned by the candidates of their or their polling agents where available at the polling units. Of course, you know the we are available at most of these polling units. And number three, it says the presiding officer shall give to the polling agents and the police officer where available uh, a copy each of the completed forms that it has been duly signed as provided under subsection two. Subsection four says the presiding officer shall count and announce the results at the polling unit. Yeah, we saw some of the videos of people, uh, you know, counting along with the presiding officer. And um, he says the presiding officer shall transfer uh, the results, including the total number of accredited voters and the results of the ballot in a manner prescribed by the commission. Of course, that's in the regu regulations and guidelines, which you can look at if time permits. So if all of this is, is not done, um, at least announce the results and display it, then, then it means that, that the results cannot hold. So why are we even having an argument? Could be, could be why not? to read section 65 and see the grounds where INEC can review 
the um, results. Just read that section 65. Let's see those provisos so where INE can review the results. Read it out to the public. What, um, maybe we'll probably just join you. That's because we're being prompted to take a break to join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news break. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll definitely come to you uh, in no time.